recorded everything on tape. This case should have been thrown out. There are cases that have been thrown out with so much less. We submitted the 440 motion to the judge and asked for a complete review on the misconduct. And instead of holding a hearing, the judge held a press conference and he said that he is going to call upon the legislators to create a law against people like you, Mrs. Giuliano. And instead of granting us a hearing, they tried to punish me. Ultimately, we went to the federal level with this and it was denied. John went into the system when he was 19 years old. He is now 39. John, till this day, maintains his innocence. The hardest thing for the public to understand is that innocence does not matter. What is going on here is they got their conviction on false testimony. All the evidence pointed away from John and they don't want to disrupt that conviction. This is an injustice. This isn't fair for John. For me, we are all suffering here across the board just so that they can hold on to the conviction. Well, Doreen, I'm glad you're here. Now, you're his mother, of course, so people would expect you to stand up for him and say that he's innocent. But right. you're not asking them to just unlock the cell and let him out. No. You're saying get, just give him a trial. Give him a fair, fair trial. trial. Exactly. You just have to follow the facts. It's the facts of the case that points actually away from John, not towards John. John is not responsible. But somebody is. Yes, and, and do, the do real know, perpetrator. And do you know who that is? Yes, he confessed. Right. More than two times, he, he confessed yeah. that he did it, and he did it alone. And why do you say this is a he said, she said case? A he said, she said case, because during trial, that's all it was. It was, um, he said, she said, there was absolutely no evidence. There was no DNA. There was no eyewitness. There was no confession. There was nothing. It was, he said, she said. Nothing tied and years to him later, to Years later, four out of five of them recanted and said they lied. They lied on the stand. They lied to the jury and they recanted. And why would they do that? Why would they lie to the jury? Well, uh, for several reasons. Uh, several of them said that they were threatened and coerced, and one actually see received a benefit for his false testimony. Okay, and talk about that. What benefit are you talking about? Well, um, he there was a jailhouse uh, informant right. that was uh, facing jail time himself. He was facing three and a half to seven years for a crime that he committed. But John didn't even know this guy and he didn't end up going to prison for his false testimony. And then approximately 13 years later, he comes forward and says he lied. And he begged John actually for forgiveness, but it was too late. John was in prison for so many years. So the whole case was um, a fraud. Now they characterized your son as a gang member. A gang member, yes. Was yes. he a gang member? No, he was not. Was he ever a member of a gang? No, he was not. And let uh -huh. me tell you about that, okay? When he was growing up, him and his friends, they used to call themselves the Stratford Stray Cats because we lived on Stratford Road. And then it morphed into the Westminster Warriors, and eventually they called themselves the Ghetto Mafia. So they were about 15 or 16 years old, the Ghetto Mafia, and one of the witnesses, because the district attorney's office pulled in approximately 120 people to question, and one of the kids said that they called themselves the Ghetto Mafia. So what the ADA did was ran with this and said that they were a bunch of gang members. When really it was just... A bunch of kids just hanging out, playing street games and board monopoly and stuff like that. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.